gaps that we're trying to fill, we're trying to select more students um, that uh, would be interested in some of our, our job classifications that will be relevant here. So we're looking for students that are interested in engineering, um, that are interested in the technical fields. We've also targeted trying to so, um, get more males interested in the program as well. We typically get a ton of females that will raise their hand and want to participate in the program. So we're, we've tried to beef up our efforts in communicating and advertising this program and getting more males engaged in the program as well. And that will help hopefully address some of our operational needs for the future. I just wonder, you know, when you have athlete, athletes, student athletes, I would think this Monday afternoon is going to be difficult. Well, the good part about it is um, we've been at, this program has solely been at all cities. Mm -hmm. So the staff are very familiar with the program. We've built a relationship with them. And so the, the, the coaches are working with us, and they all allow the students on Mondays to come late or later to practice. Mm -hmm. So, that, you know, we don't want to compete. We don't want to make them have to choose between doing this program or can I play football, can I yeah. run track. <laughs> That's not our objective, our, our objective by any means. So we've, we've built a relationship with the staff over there, so they're very familiar with the program, and they're willing to work with us. And so they're heavily involved with this program as well. Additionally, one of the other things that we're trying to do, which kind of ties in, and I keep pointing back at Don, so I apologize, but um, we've developed a, an alumni database to where we're trying to track these students beyond their junior year. We're trying to see when they go off to college. We're hoping to keep that relationship with these students so that after they graduate from college, they will remember the teamwork program. They will remember their experiences at KDB. And hopefully, if we have some job opportunities available, that these students will apply for positions that might be open. It's just a quick update on the teamwork program. I'll be happy to address any questions that you might have. Okay. The next program I want to talk about is um, the Project Help Program, and again, this is a program that you all are very familiar with as well. And this program was organized in 1983, and it was um, organized or initiated by our former general manager, Mr. Hoskins, and the late Mr. L.T. Ross, who was the executive director at CAC. And this is a joint project, um, as I said, between KDB and CAC, and the primary focus of the Project Help Program is to provide some winter um, heating assistance to those um, that are underprivileged. And as you can see, when we talk about underprivileged, we're not just talking about low income. We're talking about maybe a single parent household. We're talking about the, the elderly who, who's on a fixed income or somebody that's disabled. We're also talking about the people that may uh, come across a medical emergency and just kind of fall into that slump for an isolated period and need some assistance in, in, in heating their home or with their utility bills. The Project Help program has a Project Help board, and this board is made up of a variety of community representatives. Um, we have media representatives that serve on this board. We have social workers. We have representatives from the nonprofit um, organizations and from, the, um, from some of the for-profit organizations as well. And a primary focus of this board is to oversee this program. They determine the start dates of the program and the ending dates. And additionally, this board also oversees the fundraising efforts that go on um, to raise dollars for this program. Just to give you a couple of um, statistics about the program, as you can see, we don't just focus this program on their electricity bills. Um, it doesn't matter if they use, if a, if a client uses any of these sources to heat their home and they meet the requirements of this program and need assistance, then they can get assistance um, for any of these sources that they may choose or that they may use. Also, for 2009, just a little, uh, just a little over $100,000 $100, was dispersed, dispersed, excuse me, and that, um, $100,000 uh, assisted approximately 570, 507 excuse me, families. To date, we've had approximately 200 families that have received assistance this winter season. And of course, we're not out of our, we're not out of the woods yet. So that, two, that 200 number 
will grow by the time by April or May that number will increase. Will increase. I think one of the things that both KDB and CAC can be proud of is that 100% of these donations go directly back to, to help the families. There's no overhead costs from us. There's no overhead costs from CAC. So all the dollars that we receive, um, all the dollars are just there. We receive them and we uh, dispense them to CAC and they're 100% they're of that is going back to help our customers. Just want to talk a little bit about some of our major funding sources. Um, in 2009, some, uh, with some of our major funding sources, we raised approximately $150,000. And out of that, about $70,000 came from just KDB bill payments. This is pledges, one-time donations that come in when people check off something or send in a donation with their KDB bill. Additionally, another $80,000 was, uh, was raised, and that came from fundraising and other gifts. You may recall last year, we kind of beefed up our efforts with this program by, by having a telethon. Uh, we knew the need was growing and it was getting greater, so we, we had a telethon with WATE last year. Um, and additionally, we <coughs> did a glove sale out of Market Square to try to raise some additional funds. I would be remiss if I didn't mention these organizations in particular who assist us with our fundraising efforts. You all are well aware of the Food City Campaign and the Home Federal Campaign that kicks off in January, um, where you can go into any Food City store throughout the months of January and you can make a donation or pledge or give a contribution towards Project Health. In addition to, to that, you can go into any Home Federal branch and they have boxes set up throughout the whole month of January where you can give a donation to Project Help. Um, Home Federal is also um, an organization who, who makes a corporate uh, gift as well. We just finished our 2010 campaign and I'm proud to say that we raised um, just a little over 32,000 um, KUB employees. Um, I'm very proud to say as well, um, we have hosted um, some internal fundraising as well for Project Health. We've hosted a variety of either chili lunches or departmental breakfasts um, to raise funds, and those proceeds have been earmarked to, to support the Project Health campaign. And you may have saw on the news last week, just recently, um, the local IBEW um, did a check presentation at um, last week's Project Health board meeting, and they um, made a $500 contribution to Project Health as well. I don't have to preach to the choir here, so to speak. Um, I'm sure when you're out um, with your coworkers or just amongst your family and friends, you guys are here in distress that people, um, how they're struggling to pay not only their utility bills, but just heat their homes. So um, I think the need is greater than ever and it's gonna continue to grow each year. Um, one of the things that has contributed to that, you all, uh, I know we've had a, an odd <coughs> winter this year. We got colder much earlier. And January was probably one of the coldest months here in a long time. So <coughs> customers are still feeling the effects of those bills as well. CAC is reporting that just this year alone in this year's campaign, there's been a 40% increase in new recipients. And that's primarily due to the economy. People are either losing their jobs, businesses are closing down, or people are seeing a reduction in hours just to keep their jobs. So they're, they're needing a little assistance as well. And then also just to, to talk about the aging population, that's just a growing demographics and, and a lot of these people, they're on fixed incomes. And they're seeing those high bills just, just like everybody else. And so with that population growing, um, you know, the need is still going to continue to be even greater. It, 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 there's still a need for this program. And that kind of concludes my presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have as well. They're great programs. Mm -hmm. We need to keep doing and support our community. So I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other uh, questions or comments? It's not really the journey.